Welcome back everybody. Today on Bucket List Gear, we're going to take a look at my Mesa Boogie two-channel dual rectifier. Dual rectifiers are these mythical beasts that are definitely misunderstood by a lot of players. They are strongly associated with the entire post-grunge era of rock and metal, and most of the time, they're a love-hate kind of thing. And, you know, sounds like a recto is definitely a thing in guitar vernacular. The same way you might say something sounds like a plexi or it sounds like a strat, there is definitely a sound that a recto has. I've previously done a video called Five Killer Tones with this very amp, showcasing that it is indeed more than a one-trick pony. But today, I really want to focus on that one trick that everybody wants when they want one of these amps, which is that high-gain recto thing. Now, if you grew up playing Marshalls like I did, and you encounter one of these in the wild for the first time, you're probably going to set all the knobs at noon, put on the Red Modern channel, and you get this. And you probably go, uh, that's okay, I guess. You might run to the nearest guitar forum and bag out this amp for being too flubby and too fizzy. But here's how I would recommend setting it up if you've never played one of these for the first time. On the back, there is a switch which lets you select between solid state and tube rectification. That's where dual rectifier comes in. It means there's two different modes of rectification in there. And I've got it set to vacuum tubes because to me that is the, the thing that's really unique about this amp. And I have got it set to bold rather than spongy. Spongy is really cool, but I like the bold switch on with the vacuum tube combination. That's just what I like here. And when I set this up, what I like to do is keep the master volume quite low because you don't actually have to turn the master up very high because of the pot taper they've used in these amplifiers uh, to get it basically at max volume. Once you get it to about nine or 10 o'clock, then you just start adding power amp distortion, which isn't really what you want if you want the recto sound. So what I would do is turn the bass all the way off. I apologize about my squeaky chair too. So bass all the way off, bring the mids and the treble up and leave the presence where it is for now. The presence control has a really wide sweep on it. Now you've got this. <laughs> That is a lot closer to that kind of like definitive recto thing that a lot of people talk about. This particular amp loves being boosted. So at the moment I have a Boss EQ20 10 band graphic EQ sitting on here. And I'll show you what happens when I engage the boost once I've got this dialed in right where I like it. There's so much gain happening here. If you turn the gain all the way up and you take the mid range all the way out and you, know, you add a bit more bass, you kind of get the thing that I guess a lot of people would bag this amp for. You know, that thing. But for me, you got to pull a lot of the bass out. you got to give it a lot of mids, this particular iteration anyway. I think this is like a transition Rev F, Rev G model. Uh, Ryan Bruce Fluff has a great video on his Rev F where he talks about all this kind of stuff. We actually figured out that our amps are only a few hundred away in terms of the serial number. So yeah, I call this a Rev F sharp for all the Mesa rectifier nerds out there. Anyway, bass low. Give it some mid-range because, you know, guitar amps and mids, that's normally a good thing. And then just kind of got to experiment with your guitar where you lack the gain control. If you turn it all the way up, it's probably too much. You know, 
there is that sweet spot with the gain and with the EQ controls balanced out there. So what I'm going to do is fiddle around with this a little bit more, get it where I really dig the sound that's happening at the moment, and then I will show you the difference between this amp straight up and then boosting it. You know, you could use a Tube Scream or a Boss Super Overdrive, a Fortin Grind, but I'm using an EQ pedal with a pretty big mid-range bump pulling out a lot of low end and shaving off a little bit of excess high end to really tame it, and then it just turns into one of my favorite guitar sounds of all time. Check it out. <laughs> So hopefully that gives you a good idea of why I love this particular amplifier. I use it on every track on Ragdoll's Back to Zero album. Our approach there was to do a set of rhythm guitar doubles with the rectifier, and then we blended this amp with another amp to kind of get the unique sound of each song. And quad tracking two amps with this amp being two of those tracks is a, just a wonderful thing. I love the way it blends with other amps. I love the way it sits in a mix. Sure, on its own, you might go, ooh, it's a little bit fizzy. That's a little bit too much gain, isn't it? But once you chuck it in there with a really loud drummer and a bit of dirty bass guitar in there, it just does a thing that nothing else does. And that's why I love my two-channel dual rectifier. If you've got a Rev F or a Rev G recto, please let me know in the comments. I'm always looking for little tips on how to dial these things in and to maintain them because I found mine is a little bit finicky with tube choice and a couple of other things. So I'm always looking for hints and tips. Uh, or if you are just a fan of the Mesa Rectifier series in general, please let me know in the comments. And as always, thank you so much for checking out the video. As I said, if you want to hear this amplifier in action, go and check out Ragdoll's Back to Zero album. The links are in the video description. Be good to one another. I'll see you next time.